10 seconds to go. Hello and welcome back for the third time today. We have Not Today taking on Elite Wolves for the Sudamerican Master 4 Grand Finals. That is going on game number three. As mentioned, the series is tied up one to one. So still anyone's game. Both teams have shown that they are ready and willing to take it all the way. But, of course, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We have only this game and this draft for right now. I'm being joined in the endeavor by Illumini. What do you think about this upcoming game right now? Do you think, uh, think it's going to be more of the same kind of passive farming style? Or do you think we're going to be seeing something really different? Oh, there we go. Uh, Mike unmuted. Hey, Elmini, how you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. <laughs> Sorry for that short <laughs> introduction. I just, uh, uh, yeah. my bad. Anyway. No problem. So my question that I was going to ask is, do you think we're going to be seeing more of the same? Or do you think we're going to be seeing something really left field now that the series is tied up and neither team has all that much pressure on them? Well, the thing is... This is the first time Alchemist wasn't banned, and therefore Bounty Hunter was banned, though. So maybe one of the teams wants to grab that now. And yeah. Uh, Alchemist is a I mean, weird hero. Because I feel like you ban him, you ban him, you ban him. But why would you pick him? He just, he's got so many weak points to the hero that I think can be exploited, whether they pick an Ancient Apparition. Um, or they just put a whole lot of pressure in the early game. He is a very squishy core. So even if he does get that radiance, uh, whether it's a good time radiance or not, uh, you can still blow him up very quickly. And I don't know, maybe not today they go for the elk pick. They've got two picks here, so they could definitely grab an elk plus a synergy hero, but we'll have to see. Yeah, I guess, uh... They they could get an um, omelet on the alchemist though, and you know getting those ten armor really helps him uh, being more survivable. So now well, that that's probably the the new item to go. You know, first get the omelet, then go into the just so that they can't just kill you over and over again. Yeah, well, the omelet's yeah. a definite must nowadays for the uh, for the alchemist. You you've got to grab it, or you're just gonna get out damaged and out farmed i mean the armlet just gives him so much early game potential to even fight if he needs to but it also improves his arming speed and you can't really take that much damage from it because his ultimate is a free heart so it's really just the best item for an alchemist i feel for an early game and i don't know they'll go in for the lion first pick which makes a lot of sense i mean lion's lion you really just you grab him or else you lose him and a little bit more contested, I feel, than an alchemist for the first couple of picks, but still, we've yet to see the goblin come out in this game. I think I actually like the uh, alchemist paired with heroes that have somewhat weak Aghanim's upgrades, you know, and heroes that actually don't rush the Aghanim's scepter every single time you play the hero, you know. When, when you have something like Ancient Apparition, like, what else you're gonna buy on that hero? You're just going to build the Aghanims first, and Alchemist's not going to share you an Aghanims at 20 minutes. That's gonna, not going to happen. So, you know, you, you pick heroes instead that have a decent Aghanims upgrade, but don't really require it, you know? If it if it's something like a Phoenix, you know, to, to save someone second time, if it's something like a support Mirana, well, yeah, just give her that free Aghanim scepter at some point, and, you know, until then, she's just going to walk with her AK placed in some wards down. Ah, uh, Marana Agadim Scepter. How how delightful of an item. Yeah, it, it really is beautiful. <laughs> we will have the Phoenix come out this game, though. Phoenix and Slardar are pretty standard. Still, no Alchemist. Now he'll get banned out in the second phase, but I think it was right. Both teams kind of called the other team's bluff. Neither team actually wanted to pick it up. They were just afraid of what it offers if it is run well. So... Now that it's banned out, just to make sure that, you know, neither team has the option to grab a lineup that would involve an Alchemist, we'll start to see some more uh, standard picks and bans come out from here on out. Lion Slardar, Darkseer Phoenix, Elite Wolves, they might go in for a Disruptor again this game. I mean, Darkseer 
has some really good synergy with the hero in and of himself, but uh, I think maybe they could go in for uh, for the Disruptor if if they wanted to. There really isn't much to stop it aside from a Blink Slardar, maybe a Blink Lion, but for the moment, they've also got to think of long and hard about what kind of cores they're going to grab. And up against the Slardar, they could go in for that Sven we talked about a long time ago. Darkseer's Sven definitely has some great synergy there. Yeah, what I really like with the um, the combination of Disrupt and Phoenix, not only the fact that you can't force them to clump up in an area where they can't hit the egg, but also like, as soon as you use Supernova, everybody's trying to run away, and then you can just pull out the glimpse and get the key hero back into back to, into the area where it's going to get stunned. So yeah, I, I really would dig to see that synergy. Other sorts of supports. Well, when you play Darks here, I guess Dazzle's pretty nice. You can get out the preemptive weave and then the vacuum wall just will destroy you. And you also, uh, the thing is, when you drop down the wall and you vacuum all the enemy heroes into it, you get five illusions and you can use them to heal bomb the enemies with a Dazzle. Like, that's that's one of the dream places <laughs> I want to make. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a possibility. And Against a hero like a Skyrath Mage, he'd, he'd die immediately to that. Like, a vacuum wall heal bomb is more than enough damage to bring down Sky. But Sky also, we talked about, I think, in the in the second game uh, draft, where we saw the Phoenix get picked up. Sky is a huge counter to the Phoenix. The silence is one of the ways that Phoenixes get demolished in lane. Is If they try to Icarus dive away... If you silence him while he's diving, he can't stop the Icarus halfway through. So he will come back to the initial location. Not to mention he can't drop his supernova. So I like the Skyrath Mage. It's going to be great to have, but also you got to worry about what we talked about with the vacuum wall combos. In the meantime, though, they will pick up the Dragon Knight. Decent splash damage from the DK, offering plenty to combo up with the Darks here. But still no super synergetic hero for the moment. Just some... Good team fight. Yeah. <clears throat> About not today's lineup. Uh, thing is, the Scarlet Mage is pretty decent solo, but yeah, they 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 lack any sort of real team fight right now. And yeah, I I think they can do decent well in their lanes. All right, there's a death profit. So now they have the exorcism. They have some team fight damage, but still they don't really have any sort of lockdown, and that means. Uh, you pop the exorcism and the lead was just gonna say, all right, we run away and yeah, ex as soon as exorcism is down, we gonna go back and re-engage. And <clears throat> yeah, that, that that's gonna it's gonna look bad for not today. So yeah. Mm, I'm I'm thinking maybe they want to play the slaughter as a safe lane carrier and grab something like an off-lane void or or even the Sven as, as carry, yeah. Well, we mentioned it earlier, we would like to see him. And just the fact that you have a stun, an AoE stun as a carry, and you can serve as somewhat frontliner, I think he would definitely fit into that lineup. I like the Rubik here. Uh, there's really no way for Death Prophet to stop the Rubik from stealing the Exorcism. Like, maybe she can immediately cast a Crypt Swarm after it, but Exorcism's got a pretty long cast time. Or at least long enough for a Rubik to be able to steal it. And Crypt Swarm, also pretty long. So he should be able to find that good timing within the middle of it to get it off. And not just the Exorcism, there are plenty of good spells for the Rubik to steal this game. So I'm uh, I'm thinking the Rubik's going to be a pretty decent pick here. Now it doesn't answer that problem that we talked about where what's their synergy hero going to be. It could still be the Sven. But I'm thinking less and less that it is going to be one. Still very possible. Uh, of course we're not going to have a Disruptor or... A dazzle because we've got a Rubik, but uh, Slark's banned out. Juggernaut just got banned out by their own team. Chaos Knight's banned out, so not many options left. Uh, so I think, yeah, probably going to be something like a Sven or even could potentially be a Spectre this game. I don't really like Spectre at all against the Phoenix. With the Phoenix. Can't hit the egg. With the oh, with the Phoenix together? Yeah. yeah, I think that would be an amazing combo. Like, the Darkseer vacuum wall into into Phoenix Sun exploding, Dragon Knight, AoE, cle AoE splashing, not cleaving, and then some horn on top of it. I I'm digging that. 
And yeah, the, the other thing is Spectre usually needs a lot of time to uh, to get her items up and be able to to do stuff. And you know, when you have to hold out and drag drag the game out, like Dragon Knight is just perfect for it. That you have a frontliner, you have someone who can spam out spells to keep creep waves away. Alright, they they go for the life steal though. I should have seen this. I really should have seen this. It's so I mean, common to see the Shadow Blade Dragon Knight life stealer ball uh, and fest ball. Th they did it in the first game. They did, or did they do it, or did not today? It was them, yeah, because they had the life stealer Dragon Knight against uh, not today Leo Styles. Timber saw, but not today they'll grab the anti mage this time around. And this is kind of one of those games where I really like anti mage because Dragonite and Life Stealer do not carry at all against an AM pick. They are both very pitiful to have against him. So I like not to use drafts so much this game. The, the thing is, anti mage might not be. Uh, the thing is, Elite Wolves might not be really able to lock down the anti mage. Kill him. The other problem is though Dragon Knight and Lifesteal both have a really low mana pool, and that means anti mage can't mana burn you a lot, and therefore he can't deal too much damage, at but, least not in yeah. the earlier stages of the game. Dark Seer and Phoenix have really high mana pools though, which is a major both issue, guys, I think. Yes. And both of them end up burning through those mana pools really quickly, too. So I I think that and for that reason the anti-mage is really good, but also anti-mage is a direct counter to Dark Seer. Like, the, first of all, Darkseer does nothing against Anti-Mage in lane. He, in fact, can't even get it close to the lane. And if uh, Anti-Mage has got the Skyrath Mage and the Lion, two very, very good supports at controlling enemy offlaners, it's going to be really tough for the Darkseer to do really anything. I think it might be one of those games where Ewo has to go into the jungle and farm up like he had to in the last game as that axe. And look to grab his gold that way because going to the off lane would almost be a death sentence for him. He's, he'd get nothing from it. So that's another reason why I really like the anti mage pick here. And Ben has, I mean, he's a really great carry and he's probably uh, I've, as on par with Van as any other carry, I think, right now. So it's looking pretty good, I think, for not today. I still like their draft quite a bit. Yeah, and the other thing is when they get into the late sort of stage, game just the raw amount of physical dps that you can put out as, put out as anti-mage when when you even drop your boots to get the sixth item um yeah i definitely think am can out carry them oh yeah there's there's no question about it i think uh the only issue that am has to worry about is if we get abyssal blade on the life stealer and then he's got to worry about abyssal stun he's got to worry about telekinesis and the dragon tail stun if this Dragon Knight also goes for the Shadow Blade and they get the initiation with Van. And the late game, that's a devastating initiation on an anti mage because there's plenty of stun to keep him locked down to kill him. So that's his only real issue, I think, in this game is worried about lockdown. As once again, the scoreboard up above is lying to you guys. The score is actually one to one in this game or in this series right now. Yeah. Do, do you know the actual bug? Why is, why it is not updating or? Maybe the, the, the lobby admin is forgetting. I mean, it's not I guess, uncommon. Yeah. I should probably, like, remind him in the next lobby. But I'm probably going to forget as well, so... Okay. There's that. I, I'm going to try to help all of this well with the reminding part, but... Don't maybe, blame me when I forget. Don't deserve. I don't want to carry any responsibility. Oh, wait, no. You, you're the hero we... Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it right. All right, so uh, M God's already gone up to the top lane to try to scout out, also to drop the Observer Ward, but just keep eyes on the shenanigans that might come out from not today. Ben has he moves forward, but he is already beaten to the punch. Do they have any Sentry Wards coming up? It looks like Jericho. They're gonna have to guess on this one where the Observer is. They could guess whether or not they tried to block the hard camp, or if it's going to be one just for the ward. And it looks like. They might guess right here. If he gets it right in the middle of his trees, he might get it off, but... Observer down in the middle of the lane. And, okay, no, he's not even going to try for it. So they don't even know that they have the uh, the Observer Ward there for now. That's a pretty huge uh, advantage for E-Wolves to take out of the early lane, but it looks like... Yeah, they, they can just drop a sentry in that... Oh, yeah. Oh, I think they're paying the wrong direction. They might 
Oh, they might mess it up. No! Yes, they got oh, it! They got okay, it. just barely. They got right. it. Well played. Uh, looks like Sardar might want to try to put some pressure on the bottom rune, but no, they give it to Smash. And once again, immediately the couriers will start to bring out the salves, except Smash, he's thinking, okay, Dragon's Blood is enough for me. He's holding on to all that gold and looking for the faster bottle. This is really important, I think, for the Dragon Knight. Yeah, you you only have two breathe priors and you really have to count. So, yeah, rush, rush that bottle as fast as you can. All right, and since that Observer got dewarded by the Darkseer, they have no idea that M, God, and Masoku are this close. This could Leo's be a just... huge first blood attempt on the Ben has, but the, um, oh, sorry, the Ion Shells are going to push the Creep Wave really far back, so an initiation is tough to get. But I think they're calling the fact that the support might try to go in from around the bend. Looks like, though, that's not going to quite work out. At least not yet for Ewolves. They'll move around. Jericho getting the air spike out into Ewo underneath the tier 1 tower, but Ewo is not getting any of the aggro. Now they find Jericho and he's thinking, okay, what have I got myself into? That is very close. In fact, that will be first blood for Ewo. Now Ben has, he's got Blink, but he's going to try to bring down Masoku. This could be huge if he gets it, but no. Just a little bit of time is all he needed to get the kill, but that also could have been enough to have himself get killed in the process. So... Masoku will deny himself to neutrals, and Ewolves will take a very good first blood for their Darkseer. Yeah, and he's he's already level two, so that means now he has a search to get. Of course, he might not be able to get it off since you know you have the impale, you have the hex, you have the scum. That's a lot of disable preventing you from getting out. Yep. So they, they're probably just going to keep the Rubik there to protect the Dykes. Yeah, I think they're going to keep this offensive tri lane. Like, Van's going to have a little bit of trouble in the bottom lane as a result, but I think it's worth it to try to shut down this anti-mage as much as possible. Maybe, because Van can go into the jungle and try to pull as much as he can, but you put pressure on Ben has, then you might be able to force him away from the lane uh, completely. So, uh, huge shout out, by the way, to Latro on our stats crew here giving us all this knowledge. I want to make sure that your impact into the, into the cast doesn't go unnoticed. So thank you very much for joining us for this game. 1-0 already for the game as Smash is doing an all right job here in the middle lane. Now he had that bottle out to him, but he also was able to have a refill from Masoku who had denied TP into the lane to refill the bottle. So uh, pretty interesting, or at least deliver the bottle. Kind of fun little thing going on there. But Smash already... Dropping pretty low now. Another Soul Siphon. Turns around, but he doesn't have the Crypt Swarm. Does get it off, oh, but 60 HP left standing on Smash. That was close. Oh, King Tech on the bottom lane. He gets Van chasing him down. M-God 15 seconds before he had the Telekinesis at the ready. So this is really good right now for Not Today to get that kill. Uh, so yeah. What? Uh, they, they also forced the Rubik bottom lane now, so it means Anti-Mage is getting a little bit more, more space. Even though they're diving him, Ban chance, he has a blink, he might be able to get out. Yeah, looks like he's fine. Yeah, they're just taking a lot of damage from this Ion Shell, but... Anti-Mage versus Darkseer, Anti-Mage wins. Anti-Mage versus Darkseer plus one. Uh, yeah, things aren't looking as good for him, so... Right now, it's already a really great lane for Elite Wolves in the top, but the fact that Not Today have gotten a kill on Van is really huge. Now they might even be able to get a little bit more XD. He's going to make his way around the bend, but it looks like M God is ready and waiting for the Skyroth Mage to make a move. So we'll stay one to one right now. Uh, plenty of burn in the top lane because of those ion shells, though. That's really starting to stack up. And it looks like Antimage still not close to his ring of health. He 200 more gold and creeps are getting pulled. Jericho, Jericho. Uh, Ion Shell, plenty of damage. Ewo will grab another kill on the top lane. And now Ben has, he's farming up, trying to contest this pull. But it's looking like he can't get too close. This is really troublesome for the Antimage. Yeah, they, they said it just used the happiness clap to get rid of the range creep as well. Yep. That's what we're trying to get. So what do you think about how this top lane is going? Anti-Mage, of course, has 22 CS and hasn't died yet. But do you he think has they might need to rotate someone? 
Well, he has his ring of health now, so he should be somewhat fine. Jericho's just gonna go down again. Yeah, they, they can just run him down. Uh, no, they can dive him. Down, though, King Tekka brings down M God. This bottom lane is going very poorly for Elite Wolves. Going back up to the top. Jericho's alive. And Lance in trouble. He's gonna die here. Oh, yeah. This, that's huge. That's huge that both the bottom laners go down. Uh, Elite Wolves, they might be shutting down the Anti-Mage's farm, but they're not killing him. Meanwhile, Van's already died twice. M-God has gone down once. I mean, this is a disaster for them on the bottom. They've really got to uh, switch things up, and doing so would mean that this top lane lets go of the pressure on Ben has, which is an equally bad prospect for them, so... Uh, yeah, the, the only lane that's place. going well for Ewolves is the lane Dragonite is out CSing the, the Death Prophet. Mm -hmm. But he used his first strike for him and it looks like he can't get any tower pressure done. He isn't rotating, so it's pretty much just a farming ultimate for him. Yeah, it'll last for five seconds more, so he's not going to get anything off of it. And he finds an illusion room too, so it's not like he can rotate up to the top lane with a haste or a DD. Well, he can, he can just stop the illusions there. Well, maybe. For the moment, though, Ben has gets a little bit of space to farm now that his, uh, some of his supports are moving in. But Masoku rightfully stealing all of those creeps, making sure Ben has can't farm up any of that. However, XC might punish him a bit, gets the silence off. Masoku in a lot of trouble. There's a level 4 Skyrath Mage, needs one more Arcane Bolt, but can't get it off. Now Iwo, he moves in. The movement speed slow from the Icarus Dive, helping uh, Iwo get close, but not close enough. So Masoku will once again deny the creeps and we'll go right back to square one yeah i really like that those neutral denies are not was always so so distracting when you're like all right uh <laughs> not today i was so ahead in terms of kill it was just phoenix is denying himself two times in a row looks like eo is gonna go down here yeah just the agency of him scar of mage into just some right clicks from anti-mage. Yep, back on the bottom though. We had a little bit of an engagement between Van and King Tekka, but it looks like both are just fine. And God though will go in for the telekinesis. King Tekka, he wants to crush, but it's a rage from Van already. Just needs to get one more right click off the fairy fire, but not going to be enough for King Tekka. So that'll be a nice kill, a return kill to make uh, use of the space or use of the time in which Iwo has also gone down the top. So... They'll get a bit of revenge. And for the moment, though, Ewo has got to be very careful about this because another rotation is coming through now from M God, or XD rather. Ewo, he's able to get a surge off. They can't stun him out, and it looks like Ewo will get away from him alive this time. Yeah, I really liked how he preemptively searched there. And the, the problem with Hex is when you're searched up, you, you're actually still running with haste at movement speed. That means you really had he really had to hit the impel, else they couldn't have gotten the kill. And yeah, he was able to dodge it and get, got out safely. So well played by Ayo. Yep. And Ayo. all the while Smash is using this time to farm too. I mean, he's got a double damage room. The Elder Dragon farm is back up. So if he can get a little bit of space to pressure this tier one, he can get it easy. But they need to get someone in to help him out. Masoku's there, ready and willing to help. It's just the standoff. Both mid laners want to use the their ultimates to get the mid tier one top. And they're like, leave the lane, leave the lane. The thing is, I think Smash can do a lot more if you were to leave the lane right now, especially with a double damage rune. Exorcism is great, but at level one, it's not like incredibly it's... strong. Meanwhile, Smash, long range stun, incredible tower push. I mean. This might be more useful, but he'll hang out in the mid lane for now. Meanwhile, diving on the bottom, they go on to Van. He can't rage because he is silenced. They also get the crush onto him, so he'll go down. M God, though, going for the telekinesis underneath the tier 1 tower, but now he's in his own vein of trouble as they'll move forward. But Van will buy back. <laughs> TP's in. They want to get a return kill, but this buyback is not worth it, I feel. XD, he's got to get away from this smash. Goes in, but... Okay, he does get the kill. Oh, no, he doesn't actually get the kill. It gets split. Not worth it at all for the rotation. And this means, guess what Leo Style is going to do? Okay, maybe he won't. Not enough mana for the exorcism. All right. Interesting. Um, is there a rune ready? Well, in 20 seconds, but 20 seconds, DK is already back, so... 
Yeah, suppose he, he used just one, one crit for him too much. All right. And it may have been hard for him to push with Ewo there, but oh, they go in. They get the Dragon Tail off on the Leo style, and that's an Ion Shell. A wall's there. Not quite sure what it's accomplishing. Pretty much nothing, but it's a zoning wall. Why not? And so, one kill on the Leo style. Smash will be happy to take that one under his belt. However, Ben has is farming up in the top lane. Nowhere close to the dominant farm that Van had in the last game, but... There's a lot of excuses that can be made for that one right now. Well, they, they traded the farm on the end mage for... This guy already has a blink dagger, so he's having a field yeah. day. Super and as soon as end mage has this battlefield, like, catching up... Is... So... I'm definitely fine with that. And, you know, end mage, even when he gets this battlefield early, it still doesn't mean that he can't fight with... Oh, as soon as he has blink, he can just start to do stuff. They go on to Leo style. That's uh, a good invis room for them to get. And Leo style, well, Soul Siphon is helping him out quite a bit. A double Soul Siphon at that. He's almost back up to half HP. Eats so much and is able to get away. Oh come on, don't don't do that. <laughs> but I think it was actually triple Soul Siphon. So. Oh man, I hate that spell so much. At least it got nerfed to the point where it's no longer broken, but. It's still really annoying to get a kill in this early game, and they needed a lot more of a chain stun off on him than they got. Yeah. But finally, it's not spell immunity penetrating pure damage. Oh yeah, which was for some reason. So this tier one and taking quite a bit of damage. This is the power that the Elder Dragon form has. Multiple rotations in though. There is a silence on the Masoku, but I think that silence helped him because it didn't allow him to make a bad decision, canceling that Icarus dive. The deny will come out. Worth it as Ben has now. Makes his move into the fight. M God is getting a little bit too far forward. Now Smash moving forward gets caught by the Slytherin Crush. Ewo's there with the Ion Shell. Ben has. He tries with a Mana Void, but as you said, this is a very low Mana Pool on Smash. It did almost nothing. Now Jericho in a bit of trouble. They'll move forward. They'll get the kill. Support for a support in the end. But a tower will go down. Albeit denied, but still dead. Uh, Leo's oh, down. Might no. be in trouble though. Yeah. He's going down as well. Is he going to go drum some Death Prophet now? With a Bracer as well as Windlass? Yeah, it looks like it. Bracer, Ring of Regen, or Ring of... Yeah, Ring of Regen, Windlance, that's a drum. So I guess at least Ben Haas is happy about that, because he, he has at least gotten some space to farm now. And even though his battle fuel is not finished yet, I think... It's going to be there in about maybe 15 minutes, I guess. Yeah, agreed. Smash gets the stun out onto XD. However, they've got the Slytherin Crush, that Blink Dagger doing work. However, XD might not be out of the woods just yet. In fact, he is deep in the woods. Uh, that's not going to give him quite the cover he needs to get away, though. King Tekka on the run. He should be fine. Leo style maybe a bit too far forward, though. He has no Soul Siphons now, and he'll get brought down, or at least he does have a soul siphon, but it's not oh. nearly enough to keep him alive. What did he try to do there? He didn't even pop the exorcism, you know, when he was like, all right, I'm going to pop I don't a know. Slytherin crush follow up, but man, he just runs in and dies. And now also just going to die is a tier one bottom as there is Smash laying into it. Ben has trying to do some split pushing, but right now his tower push isn't incredibly fast. He can only hope to bring down the creeps. Uh, to do any real lasting damage, but Masoku's there. Has to Icarus dive away. Ben has not going to opt to chase the Fire Spirits, reducing his attack speed. And as such, we'll see the Tier 1 bottom go down. No trades happening to make it worth it. Jericho, very deep ward here. Does he get scouted out for it, though? Looks like he'll be fine for now. And Lion does have a finger ready, so they might just want to blow up the Phoenix. Impale into into a finger of death should be enough for him to get a kill. Oh, can can they maybe get the life stealer? Oh, this would be so huge. Yeah, they'll find it. They get out the hex out. Mystic flare there. Finger of death. Okay. Uh, finger of death once again. A very aptly named spell right there. So, at the moment, that is a very great kill for the life stealer to have. And, or for the, not the day to have on the life stealer. And yeah, I'm, everything looking so good so far for not today.
I mean, they're not super out of the game just yet. They've got anti-mage farming, and despite the fact that Evo is getting quite a bit, despite the fact that Smash is getting quite a bit, we, we've seen how good an anti-mage is at turning the game around, so... Yeah, they're, they're popping Exorcism, they might not be able to... At least they're getting damage, and that's gonna be Supernova <laughs> initiation. Everybody and pulls them right back, as you mentioned. Just such a great way to keep them within the range of the egg. Now there's going to be a Sunray out. And Hexy taking quite a bit of damage from this. He actually might go down before the TP connects. No! He gets away! Oh, oh that was super close. But now, Van, he is caught. He got popped himself into the rage, but there is way too much damage for him. They'll blink forward on the Ben has. Oh, in the mid infest. He'll get brought down. Trying to get inside the siege creep, but it's not going to be enough. So, another he's, really He's still would have died anyways, I guess. But Smash pushing, pushing the mid tier too. So, yeah, he's forcing him back at least. So, Jericho, they make him to turn the dragon into the fish. Now they've got the concussive shot. They hit him with the arcane seal. But King Tekka, he blinks forward, takes a huge amount of damage. They get the vacuum back in. But that's uh, into the enemy's Mystic Flare there. So, Ewo uh, looks like he's going to pay for this one. They move forward. Leo Style gets the kill with a Crypt Swarm. And now... Misoku has to be very careful. The amplified damage they've got for perfect vision on him. As There's no doubt for 25 seconds. I think he's he shouldn't be able to get out. Yeah. yeah. M God oh, though they, looks like he's gonna be able to get away they, alive. Yep. Right. Yeah. They just got the slow. A good turnaround for not today right there. They were having a bit of an issue, not out of it, but having issues, and now they take a three nil and a whole lot of gold that comes with it, leading off the kill score with uh, Golden Experience back in their favor, albeit shallow, but there. Yeah, now Ben has, has the Battle Fury, so that means his farm is going to accelerate a lot. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the, the other heroes on, on his team are still able to do stuff. Also, Lion looking already, he, he's no very close to Blink Dagger, but at least he has Trankles and a Magic Wand, so a little bit of sustainability. And there's another Fink of Death ready, so when they run into this Lifestealer, they can just kill him again. Don't even use the Finger of Death for him. He's, they're like, you're not worth it, man. <laughs> I mean, with just with the Ancient Seal Magic Damage Amplification, that's, that's so much damage for them. They'll move once again into the tier 2 tower, but this time there's a lot surrounding them. Ewo back off. Masoku getting caught in the trees, though. They've got the Ancient Seal onto him. Silence is killing him. He needs to get that Supernova off, but he can't get it. He's just out of time, out of life. And now Ewo's dropping another three, potentially even four, as the Exorcism burning away. That's a triple for Leo Style. Make it an Ultra as he's chasing down Ewo. Plenty of damage is there. The Crypt Swarm, there it is. Ultra kill for Leo style. I, I really have to give it to the line. Like the, the hex came out during the search cost and preventing it from getting off. And yeah, w when he gets the search off, he definitely just runs away. So really well played by line here. And he made, you know, just split pushing top lane. So awesome, awesome played fight by the side of not today. They, they had, a, had a rough early game, but yeah, just the life stealer dying a little bit too much. Slaughter getting the early blink dagger. I guess that was the key part for them, and he actually picks up a hand of Midas on Slaughter. Interesting pickup. It's pretty common, I think, for Slaughter. I mean, he's got it before 20 minutes with a Blink Dagger and Treads. I mean, this is where Slaughter should be without hand of Midas. So, just filling the space that you know any other Slaughter would be at, and getting something that accelerates your farm, like that'll allow him to kind of move with the Anti Mage. And now the gold and experience advantage for Not Today will be exponential. Not just from one hero, but from multiple. So I like this decision from Not Today. They recognize that they can afford it, and they just go for it. And I mean, the other thing is the 30 attack speed. Pretty pretty nice, since you have the N8 bash. And yeah, attack speed just means more bash blocks. So I guess, guess it's fine as well. Yeah, I mean, you can't really discount the attack speed. I'm pretty sure it's just because it's built out of a glove of haste, though, because it's a glove. But, I mean, it's not like you build this item for the attack speed. But it's definitely a great thing to have in addition to the gold that he comes in with. So, yeah, he'll continue farming this one out very quickly. 
I don't know if there's many ways that Elite Wolves can stop this. I mean, they're going to have the Infest Bomb combo pretty soon. They've got the Blink Dagger actually out already, so it's there. Not a Shadow Blade, but a Shadow Blade right now, I mean, it's better to pick off an Anti-Mage, but they're past the point where that's going to be possible. They need something to keep Smash mobile, keep them across the fight, find the initiations without having to worry about possible detection. And unfortunately, they're going to lose the Roshan before they can even try to take a fight. I think in the first game, they also realized that getting a Shadow against the Slaughter is not the best thing of all to do. Because, you know, you, you can't just use it to disengage since you're going to be amplified. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Well, then, technically, you can't use Blink Dagger to disengage either, but... Uh, maybe, you know, with a Dragon Tail, then, then you're able to run for a few seconds and... Oh. I think it's a little bit more likely than popping the Shepherd Blade and trying to run away while they have full vision on you. This is true. So we'll move forward. Double Dragon. Plenty of damage. And the cool thing about the Ancient Black Dragon is it's got such a good way at burning down creep waves. I mean, that fireball is huge whenever you're dealing with it. Multiple TPs coming in, though. I think they're not really worried about the Ancient Black Dragon going down. Uh, a little bit of a misplace in that fireball, but... It doesn't really die quickly. And even though Ben Haz can move up and kill it in a decent amount of time, there's no real way to lock it down. So it'll go in, get some good damage off. Now they move back. They try to go behind the lines. Vacuum in. Wall, lots of damage. King Tekka might go down here. Looks like he will. Jericho, though, with the Impale catching two, plus an Illusion. Looked like three at first, but uh, of course that's not the case. Now Leo Style getting caught here. He's got the exorcism rolling, the Soul Siphon, helping him stay relatively fast and alive, but Smash taking way too much damage from the exorcism. Looks like Smash will go down. Leo Style stays alive! With sub 100 HP, now back up above. Goes in now for Masoku. With that exorcism, look at the damage, chunking him away. A triple kill once again. Leo Style blowing through this lineup with the Death Prophet. Damn. Uh, first I was like, Oh, oh my god, he's gonna pop as an exorcism, he's gonna go down immediately. It looked like he would, and then he didn't. No, <laughs> just a combination of spirit siphoning, his HP back to full, wild yield scepter. It was beautiful to watch. He, he definitely outplayed them, and yeah, he did great. I'm, I'm happy. I'm glad you're happy. This is... This is very, bringing back bad memories about Death Prophet. But, in the end, he was able to pop an Invisibility Rune. Goes in for M-God. I don't think this is a very easy kill for him to get. And it looks like, yeah, he kind of agrees. He'll back away for now. Going towards the mid lane. Doesn't have any backup, so he can only really scout for now. And, in fact, kind of good plan they did try to go in for Smash because this uh, Sentry Ward has still persisted. But now, he's got a little bit of backup, but facing almost the entire team of Elite Wolves. Has to be careful about where he initiates. He'll go in for the mid lane. Uh, left steal a mid. This could okay, be. Okay, they really didn't cool. go for <laughs> Maybe if they had been able to initiate with a blink crush, they would have found him, but. Well, Lion has a blink now as well, so blink hex is also possible. Who was just standing at the cliff and you now moving a little bit to the left and the right, and I was like, all right. He's trying to get the initiation, but then it just backed off. So nothing happened. And now, not today, they'll push down the Tier 2 tower. I I don't know if Elite Wolves are going to be able to fight this. I mean, they're, they're so far behind the net worth of not today. Like, they've, they've got to be able to bring down Leo Style, which is proving to be an impossible task to do the first time. But he's got an Aegis Immortality. So even though the Exorcism will not really help with the Aegis... He'll still be able to come back and drop Crypt Swarms and Soul Siphons and just be an overall nuisance. As there's the Exorcism going in for the Tier 2 Tower. There is a Glyph to spend and it looks like they will hold on to it as Leo Star Smash goes in for Leo Style. They've got the Vacuum, they've got the Wall. The Yule Scepter up though. Leo Style trying to stay alive throughout this all thing. They've got the Soul Siphon, but he will get brought down. Exorcism still kind of flying through, but I'm pretty uh, sure that's it's, the it's wrong Rubik's hero. Exorcism. That, yep, that Rubik stole it this time. Remember we talked about it in the draft? And. They'll continue chasing down, but not today. They've already lost one. They lose two. They drop him as, um, Ben has. It's a very important kill as Ewo moves in. Now for XD. They get the stun off. Finally, Elite Wolves will take a very good fight for themselves. 
Uh, will uh, Misko have exorcism back up for the second usage? It looks like, yeah, he should have it again. So, this is huge. The fact that he's got exorcism right now. Oh, you mean Rubik? Yeah. He, he just stole it, so that, that means it's going to be up for quite some time. Yep. Um, in terms of death profit, like, they just really need to secure that, that she doesn't die early. And she she was somewhat forced off into the enemy team, but you also, they, they don't have four staff, right? Yeah, so. King Tekka's four staff. Kill them, or either King Tekka's or uh, XD's. I guess he tried to move the Death Prophet out of the Sunray, but yeah, he, he just moved him further into the enemy team, which was well, not the best thing to do. Yeah. Well, now Elite Wolves have a four staff of their own, so they can make that play intentionally <laughs> instead of having it given to them. So. Yeah, let's look at the rare shards. They're going to be pretty much forever until it respawns. Yeah, Lifestealer, he went for the Echo Saber. I, I guess I really like that choice since, you know, Feast is one of those abilities that just requires you to attack lots of times. And, you know, you're a strength hero and that means you're not building attack speed by building damage. You know, agility just... Every agility goal is just gonna get a butterfly at some point. That means tons of attack speed. Strength heroes don't, don't really get that. And yeah, Echo Saber pretty much solves the problem for them in the early game. The really amazing. Since, you know, you just want to be able to cast a few spells regularly. And yeah, I, I think I really dig that item as well. It, it also solves as a somewhat... Mm, Oh, New we form have an of pop from M God Mis uh, Misko. He's doing a lot of damage here, but he might actually get brought down. He's able to stay alive through it all. Meanwhile, uh, unlucky as Leo style, the actual Death Prophet is not able to stay alive through it and has getting hit by the Dragon Tail, but smashes no more mana. Really isn't that much to follow up from this one at all, as M God's still persisting. They should get this tier two with the Exorcism coming and chomping through it. So. Oh, yeah, backdoor Leo's protection style. just comes up. They have enough damage, I think, though. Nope. Okay. The next is going to go The thing is, uh, Death Prophet just used another exorcism. So, yeah, that, that's done for quite some time. And even though Leo Star finished his elk drawing core, he, he didn't really get too many heals out of it. So... Yeah. I guess it just needs to build some armor as well, so oh, yeah. that he's right. able to take up. I mean, we talked about Life Stealer hitting targets who build all raw HP, but no armor. I mean, Death Prophet's got six armor with seventeen hundred HP. He'll get chunked away for well over two hundred damage per hit, which is a lot considering he just doesn't survive very well right now. So Smash uh, getting kept alive by the Sunray. Very balanced spell right now is King Tekka. Well, gonna suffer for that attempt at his life. Meanwhile, XD, they've got him with the open wounds. They've got him dead. And now Van can go ahead and take another dragon. No, he doesn't have enough uh, cooldown to infest it again. So, whatever. They just move forward now. With two dead on Not Today, Elite Wolves can try to make things happen. Maybe put down and bring down a tier 3. I mean, they're bringing out the creep wave, so they're gonna drop back to our protection a lot faster than they would or normally and they go for it smash and the elder dragon for him they got lots of damage they don't have exorcism anymore but i mean they probably would have gone away very soon exorcism now being cast m god they're trying to keep him silent so he can't steal it again but smash moving right in leo style just getting annihilated he self yules himself up though he's still alive as ben has comes through and it's a double with the mana void but in comes the supernova as jericho Going down the tick damage plus Van is enough to knock him away. And with Leo style dead and Jericho as well, looks like E Wolves, they want to try to finally get that Rax. But Smash, he gets dropped by Ben Has, who is running away from a life stealer, is able to blink out. Van, he's just got to finish off this Rax. They need to get it. They need to make it some sort of advantage. But the Rax, they're still standing. Oh no. They tried. They threw everything at that Rax, and it doesn't go down. 
Yeah, I mean, Slaughter had to buy back for that. I think it, it's somewhat fine, fine for evils. Of course, you, you would love to get the barracks, but I think it's still somewhat okay. So it, it's not a complete loss. Let's phrase it that way. It's not a complete loss, but losing four in the process, that's pretty bad for your team to have to suffer. I mean, you gave away a lot of golden experience from that one kill or from that one team fight. I mean, you need something to make it worth it. And I don't think a buyback was worth it, makes it worth it. I think you need to get that Rex. Because they'll lose Aegis as well. Like, Anti-Mage Ben has now has an Aegis Mortality, and killing him the first time was very hard. Killing him again? Uh, well, they've got their work cut out for them. Yeah, I think this time they, they need to ensure to when they put out the Exorcism. I feel like th this was a problem in the fight, you know, Dux, uh, Death Prophet just pops the Exorcism, Dragon Knight is like, all right, I'm, I'm getting tickled, don't really care, all right? Death Prophet's dead, Exorcism's down, rest of the team, come join me. Yeah. So. <laughs> I liked your, uh, I think... your impression there. That was... Thanks. Thanks. Was wonderful. But uh, it looks like they'll smoke up. If they can do that again to Leo Style, this could be huge. He's got that Blink Dagger, remember. Just needs to find the right initiation. Needs to find the right target. Leo Style, he's hanging back. But now he's on the opposite side. He's isolated. They might get it. But no, they find Jericho, who rightfully hangs back to pop the smoke. They'll go in. They pop the Dragon Tail. But that is not a target that you want a Dragon Tail on. Three will get silenced as King Tekka moves in. Slytherin crushed down. Smash. He's trying to fight through it all. But Leo Style, he's got it out now. He's found his stride. And now he's burning down the house. Smash on the run, but they've got the blink forward. Ben has is there, and they bring the Dragon Knight down. Not a great smoke initiation. Lion is not your target, but... Phoenix so just bought back. Will he oh, die again? Man. Does he have an Icarus dive? 10 seconds? Yeah, he's he's down. 75 seconds on that dieback. And just like that, E-Wolves, they were looking solid for a little bit of time, but now their own mid rax is being threatened by the Anti-Mage. I, I guess they're going to have to buy back on DK. Or... Yeah, they have to. They're going to lose a Rax if they don't buy DK back. They might even lose two. <laughs> so he will come into the game. They don't need to buy back Rubik. He'll be back in five seconds. Van's going to be very careful of how he deals with this Amplify damage. The Illusions will get brought down pretty quickly as Ben has now on the run. They don't lose a Rax just yet. Very important for Elite Wolves. As M-God now moving forward, trying for a stun, gets an Amplify damage. That's actually really huge for him, him to have with Van as his own team. As Van also gets the Assault Kuras. Now I think he just needs a Basher and things will look really good for uh, for not to die, uh, for Elite Wolves. I guess, yeah, the, the last steal is going to have with the, with the Exorcism now. And... In the last fight, we saw that the DK got a little bit of problems, but he was like tanking the exorcism for like five or six seconds straight, oh, completely God. solo. Let's go. Okay, you're in the wrong neighborhood, buddy. They bring him down very quickly, and now King Tekka is looking for the follow-up kill. Wants something more, but he won't be able to get it off. And now Rubik still has that buyback because he didn't pop it in the last one. But one thing that's very important. E-Wolves, they've got both an Assault Kuras and a Shiva's Guard now. So I think they can and, still fight. And Exorcism's up again. So... Uh, I, I think uh, not today. They're definitely gonna go Oh, high. Smash, he goes in. They get two with a stun. Or at least, I don't know what happened to... Uh, Jericho there, but King Tekka taking a lot of damage here. Sunray burning him through. Smash now goes in for Leo style. This time, the Death Prophet cannot stay alive through it all. Soku still has amplified damage. They move in for XD. They get down the, uh, the Skywrath Mage, and now he wolves. They make another push in for the mid lane. Ben has farming up their Ancient Pit. No, e wolves. They want to find the Anti Mage. This could be good if they can get out the Dragon Tail. They get it, but where's their follow-up stun? They've got a vacuum. They've got something. They Actually, he's in the trees. Do they have the right scout out? Do they know he's there? The they do. They stun. vacuum him. He's got Aegis, but burning the Aegis right now would be huge. They've got the Ion. They've got the damage. Smash Dragon Tail in four seconds. He's also got Blink, so he can call wherever he blinks forward to. Ben has. He just turns to fight, but no. Smash, he goes forward. They've got the Abyssal Blade for him, though. Smash, he does his Dragon Tail still. Catches him out. Do they have a Telekinesis? Do they have any way to continue locking him down? No, they do not, but... Misko has a blink of his own. He stole it. Now he's got telekinesis. Brings him up. Smash. Another dragon tail. 
They've got the damage. 80 seconds down without buyback. No buyback. 750 gold off of it. I don't think he thought he was going to die there. I didn't think he could have died there, but they chained their stun so perfectly. Blink Dagger, of course, M God stealing the blink for himself. Beautiful engagement yeah. for Ewald. Just the fact that he just meta style to. You know, when you respawn with the Aegis and you just try to cast the blink, like, the cast animation is way too long for you to be actually get it off, but with the Manta style, it was just perfect. Yeah, King Tekka now getting a little bit too far forward. He is now dead without buyback. Not today. They're losing systematically. They're heroes. They will have very left, very little left to defend if this keeps moving forward like this. Smash. The hero of death comes out to him. He pops a BKB. Soul Siphon. The, remember, it doesn't go through BKB anymore. They turn around onto Leo style. He'll Yules up, but the BKB is keeping Smash alive so healthy. He is just taking everything. And they knock everyone down. Leo style still alive on the back lines. I don't I thought they think they thought they killed him. I think they thought they got the kill. Because that exorcism is destroying them right now. They still get the uh the ray up the racks though, which is perfect for them. But, but oh, I, Phoenix just came back, and now he's gonna die. I think he got silenced. Whatever the oh, yeah. case. Maybe I he mean, got silenced in the last time. You're right. That was, I, I thought they killed Leo style. I think they thought they did as well, because that exorcism, because he didn't die, was ripping through their HP pools. Wasn't enough to kill them, but still was very problematic, and I think meant that they couldn't try to go for more than just one set of wrecks. <laughs> Yeah, right before Leo style died, he got glimmer caked up by a line and then forced off by someone. Suddenly, he was invisible in a spot where I didn't expect him at, <laughs> at all. And yeah, that's how I just lost track on him. Maybe that, that's the thing. He's just gonna buy a Shadow Blade now. I, I get get that know. pop spread. You know, uh, I think Shadow Blade Death Prophet used to be a thing. Like not a not a pro thing, like a pub thing, but still, I feel like I've been I've been. Oh, King Taka, no. I mean, it, it 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 only works once, but I mean, you only have to get it work once. King Taka just used BKB to farm a creep camp. Uh, well, this is, it was his ten second BKB as well. I think oh. he was expecting to cast maybe his Slytherin crush is right next to his BKB hockey, but that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Looks Maybe like. he switched up the blink dagger on BKB. Could be. Whatever the case. Not today. We'll start to push out the bottom lane. But I think uh, E-Wolves want to beat them to the punch. They're moving really far ahead right now. It looks like they want to fight outside the base. Not today. They're grouping up for what I think might be a smoke. But they find an ancient black dragon. Nice I wonder who's in the ancient black dragon. Smash! He comes in to re take its place. He's like one dragon down. Well, meet number two. They move forward though. But they're not finding any kills. Masoku, he's in the trees. He's got to surge out to get himself away alive. The Soul Siphon, though, is keeping M God low. But now Leo style, the BKB's done for him. So, Smash, he just goes straight on in. Jericho on the run. But yeah, there's nothing getting away alive there. Smash is just doing so much damage right now. Like Reaver, it gives him a lot of HP, but it also gives him a sizable amount of damage on top of the armlet. And a lot can be said about Elder Dragon form number three, too. Like, this this is just incredible how much he's doing in the fights. Yeah, you know, basically, you just get a free Scotty as well. And being arranged here with a Scotty as, as a strength with a 3,000 HP, more than 40 armor. Uh, not more than 40 armor, but almost 40 armor. So, yeah. You, you just can't bring this guy down. You would need something like a lifesteal against the DK to to His tear through those. Dragon's almost things. healing him through the armlet. Like, if that doesn't tell you the story of how how strong this hero's passive is, I don't know what does. As they go in now, second set of racks. Leo style back up in twenty. Smash just doesn't care, but he doesn't have an Aegis. He is getting uh, what's the word? Oh yeah, demolished. Underneath the tier three or the racks on the bottom lane, Masoku also going dead down. Both are without buyback, so uh, maybe turn they the tides can get again. something. I I feel like just both teams want to go ham. I mean, kills are fun, right? Uh, I I don't know. 
I don't know if going ham is the right thing here. Like, right now, they're they're pushing way too hard. They, again, throw bodies out of racks, and they don't even get the racks. This is the second time I think they've done this. Now, it's not a really good example of problem because the first time they were eventually able to come back and get the racks in the end, but still, a double damage with oh, by King Tekka now. A, the rune of many one games as maybe they can make some use out of it. 30 seconds before Dragon Knight Smash is back onto the field. I but think I the most worry. important part is that Death Prophet has the cheese now. Uh, she can actually use the cheese before she dies and the exorcism keeps going. Instead, you know, when when you have the Aegis, you die, exorcism's gone and you're somewhat useless. Uh, Van, what, 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 what's your plan up here, dude? I don't, I don't know. Van's having a ball with his uh, ancient golem. As Jericho, Ben has a movement for this Rax. They should be able to get it, I think. I mean, it will be a glyph. Got bought out heart. Actually, no, they can't fight this. In comes Smash. He goes in with a BKB. The vacuum! Locking them all in. The splash. It does enough damage. The Leo style is already dead. What was that about a cheese? I didn't even see the cheese. It must have spoiled. I don't know. Either way, the Sunray coming through. Ben has taken a bit of damage, but Jericho's the one to take it all to his grave. XD. I think they're calling it. I think what? I I I, I mean, the scarf mage just stopped moving, so I was like, "All right, are they are they giving up now?" It might be it? it. I mean, Smash. He can keep his armlet on now, so he's got all that extra damage. The heart of Teresk giving him a lot more as well. The assault Kiros from Van. They're moving in. It looks like maybe they want to try to find Ben Has. I'm not totally sure he'll get this kill, even if he does find it. But he certainly tries for it. They'll buy it back on King Tekka as Smash taking the full brunt of three anti-mages. But, yeah, look at that. Little to no damage as Smash now and a whole load of trouble. Does have an Aegis Mortality, but I don't think they really care about him right now. They're moving. They'll get the racks. In comes Misoku just doing a little bit of damage to say, Hey guys, I'm here. Don't forget about me. And they'll drop the melee racks, and then they'll be on the run. Van, oh wait, no smash, he's not going to stop, he goes in for King Tekka, that was a buyback on your Slardar. Van moves forward, but uh, goes ahead and infests to get himself out alive. Uh, uh, the, the problem that I have with Slardar is, Sprint is an amazing ability, yes, but it also makes you really squishy. And, you know, he went for the Blink deck as well as Force stuff, and that means you just don't have any HP oh, at Van all. Has. Ben has, he goes in, but a little bit more than he can deal with here. Actually, maybe not. He brings Iwo down, is able to blink down blink down to the south, and now bash up Masoku, who pops out with the Lotus Orb to see if he can get a uh, a self-abyssal, but unfortunately, the Abyssal Blade has already been used. Gem will hit the deck. Van going down elsewhere uh, and dropping about 1,000 gold in the process as Ben has now chasing Smash down and should be able to get this kill, actually. He just needs a bash and gets number one. Uh, four staff away, but yeah, no, Smash is more than dead right now. He does have a buyback, as well as Van, but Masoku and Iwo both are lacking. Doesn't mean, though, that not today are going to be able to push too well, because their mid lane is getting ransacked, and bottom is not quite pushed in enough to make use of the time. Yeah, they, they should, still should try to force a buyback. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, anti mage is gonna take the pressure in part. I mean, he has the Aegis, so he should be spot fine as long as it's not the full team that he's trying to play against. Because they definitely have the, the amount of lockdown they needed. Looks like, yeah, they might just have to buy back here unless they want to give up their racks, which looks like they're gonna do. They, they don't want to buy back, but Ben Haas doesn't have to stop there. He's gonna go in for the second set of melee racks. And that means that, there it is, Smash will end up buying back into the game. Yeah, that was very well played by the Anti-Mage. Just yeah. going straight in for it and making sure that that buyback was indeed forced. That means one lane of Rex, one buyback. Pretty decent trade for, for the side of not today. Mm -hmm. So, Anti-Mage right now doesn't have any sort of boots, doesn't have a TP at all, but I mean, he's... So that he that he can just join the fights whenever they break out. So I guess it's okay. And how's Leo style looking? Mm, he he didn't really. I don't think I've seen him get another item in a long time. 
Like, these, this has been the same item build that he's had for the past 20 minutes. No, no, no. He got the BKB after the... Then it stopped. So... Alright. 15 minutes then. <laughs> yeah, more like 15 minutes. Guess. But, yeah. The Aegis will now get reclaimed. And that means Ben has. He'll buy himself a BKB. Very useful for him to have. Just make sure that Smash can't get the chain stun off onto him, or at least start the chain stun rolling. But, I mean, this is very reminiscent, actually, of the last game, because this is actually uh, almost exactly what the last game was, except instead of a Vlaz, he had an Assault Kiras. With Regardless, though, Ben Has is approached or reached six-slotted. Just can well, uh, move the Vlad for something else. Last game it was Evolves with the... Yes, indeed. But, yeah. All right. Uh, 45 minutes in. We've got yet another pause. I mean, the pauses haven't been too long, so... No, I no, I'm, I'm, I'm just... It gives us a time to take a breather. Oh, yeah. This has been an incredible series so far. I think I, I, I wouldn't have given it up for the world right now as we are nearing the end of our third game and that puts it at match point for whoever wins this one so we either go two more games after that or just one more regardless i gotta say to both teams they've been putting up one hell of a fight and i don't know i'm thoroughly enjoying this series yeah even though i feel like they're they're getting a little bit more happy in terms of their engagements well, I mean, you just have to expect it after going into the third game. You know, they, they have been playing for a while now. And, yeah, you're just not as concentrated as you were. So. We're going to see now. Ghost step down the Rubik. I really like the pickup again. Exorcism as well as Antimage should be able to keep him safe for a long time. Yeah, he's just got to steal spells and keep that rolling out in the middle of a team fight. Like, that's, that's his main objective, is causing discord throughout the fight. So, for the moment, the longer he can stay alive, the better, as no one on the map right now has buyback. The next fight could be massive. Looks like there was a smoke attempt from Not Today, briefly. But they decide not to do it. I think the play for Not Today right now would be to try to stall the game out for as long as possible get the Aegis Mortality, get buybacks on your heroes, and then try to fight. But if if Ewolves were to force the engagement right now and take a favorable one, they just straight up win, I think. Mm, I think it's in both sides. The, the one who would win a team fight right now wins the whole game. Yeah. The thing is nobody wants to risk that. Okay, and Smash will pop his own BKB. <laughs> I guess it's already down to five seconds. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Still kind of uh, kind of funny how much that's happening this game. Yeah, I guess it's just getting to them. It's a lot of pressure as well, so... Oh, but we haven't been talking about Scarth made to Saw. He was able to pull together a run of Aetis, Force Staff, Rail of Discord, as well as Ghost Sept. This guy has been... Getting a decent amount of farm, to say. Yeah, I mean, he, he had a great early game, too. I mean, he was part of that lane that was completely and utterly breaking E-Wolves apart. So I'm, I'm not surprised that he's got the farm to reflect it. And the one issue with Skyrath is he dies so quickly in the fights. He's almost like M-God, where he's dying too quickly to make use of this items kit that he's got. But maybe this Ghost Scepter that he's got will help him out against the Dragon Knight. One thing's for sure, though. The longer this game goes on, the more Ew uh, Not Today are going to struggle with the vacuum wall of Ewo, giving the illusions. He's also got himself a Scythe of Vice now, which is a real big issue for the anti-mage. We'll see. I guess they're just going to have to purchase the Lotus Orb at some point. Yep. XD. He's right for the picking, but he's not exactly the target you want to go for if you're Ewolves. So they'll hold back for now. Still anti-mage, no buyback. Ewo will be able to grab his, though. The only one available. 
And now, uh, not today. They move aggressively. They go in. They try for a D ward as Van goes out on to Jericho. Two more swipes, but they keep four staffing him back. He can't solidify the kill. And now they've got the Lotus Orb onto him, but they hit him with a Mystic Flare. Now Van taking a bit of damage, but he can turn around. He's survived through all of it. There's a vacuum locking them all in. And not today. They get abruptly demolished in the fight. 80 seconds without Leo style. Now Ben has. He is down. No buyback. I think that's it. I think that yeah. might very well be the game it is. Not today. We'll call it Ben has. Uh, throws out the GG. Incredible game so far. Again, incredible series as we head on to a game number four with E Wolves having match point. I, I feel like the sad part of the game is that Rubik's as a more effective than Death Prophet Swans. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. I mean, Leo style, or yeah, he he was able to get good exorcisms off, but he just was not able to survive through them. So it, it really just didn't have the impact that I think they needed him to have. Like Smash, when he had his exorcism, he was able to stay alive throughout all of it. He was able to, I guess, not tank because there was no real way for the Chaos Knight to get up close to him to force him to take damage when he's got a BKB, but regardless, incredibly played from Elite Wolves to come up through with this victory. And, I mean, any final thoughts before we throw it off for our potentially last game? Maybe they should start to look at Centaur Warrior as a slaughter repick, or, or not repick, uh, to, to swap him out with the slaughter. You know, Center Warner, he also has the blink stomp initiation. But the thing is, when, when you get that Aghanim Scepter together, <clears throat> just the fact that you get, I think, 70% damage reduction for four seconds, you know, you, you buy your Death Prophet a lot of time where it doesn't really damage, where it can run in directly into the enemy. I feel like, you know, just switching it up a little bit and getting the Center Warner back, in, back into the meta with that might be a good thing here. Well, we'll see if they end up doing that as we're going to take a short and potentially final break, guys. Don't go away. More Sud American Master 4 Grand Finals will be coming up 